Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Right Time, a Wave Sports and Entertainment original presented by Prize Picks. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening wherever you get your podcast. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Like, subscribe, rate us, review us, give us five stars. You only give us four stars. I'm inclined to believe you are a hater. It is Foxworth Friday. Dominique Foxworth, what's going on? Chilling, man. It's uh, it's ugly out here in these streets. It's getting bloody for these coaches. It is. We're going to get to that. We're going to talk about some of this playoff action that's coming up. And I just want to get to it quick, right fast, off the top. Dominique, you've already seen this. Um, So, like, I don't know what exactly it is that 21 Savage is doing, but he has at least (laughs) told the world that he plans to put out a movie about his life and it had a four-minute trailer to it where Donald Glover plays him when he's older and somebody I y'all have heard of that I haven't heard of plays him when he's younger. But anyway, I look up on the internet and people were talking about it and they sent a clip and it looked like it was like some version of Highly Questionable in there. And I was like, wow, what a random thing. And then I looked at it and was like, no, nah, they, really they really try to do Highly Questionable. And I was like... I had no idea that I had such an impact on the life of 21 Savage that not only would I be part of the movie, whatever the hell they doing about his life, but that I would make the trailer of the movie about his life. Except the problem is, I don't know what I did to 21 Savage. Donald Glover. <laughs> like, I have no idea what I've done to offend these people. I met Donald Glover one time. It was with Pablo, and they was talking about Star Wars and shit, right? Like, <laughs> like, so we didn't talk very much. I don't feel like I was in a position to say anything that was offensive. I felt, I felt like his, his people treated me very well. But for whatever the reason, they they had your boy out there looking bad, dog. They 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 <laughs> they they had they 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 thought that I would get on TV without no jacket on, just with a shirt, a dress shirt with the undershirt out of it, the, the out the pack joint, the 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 the, the one the, the church one. You know what I'm saying? And I just don't know what I ever did to give them that implication. And never mind the fact my man Poppy had a Fu Manchu. I don't know how you say that in Spanish, but he had a Fu Manchu. <laughs> And then I was out there in a dingy undershirt under a mediocre dress shirt. And I don't know who I need to blame. It was like, like it, it didn't seem like it was meant to be. A, it was like in that gray area where it was like, they obviously not mean to insult you, but they didn't care enough to do you right. Like it was the only one that they <laughs> like dance. They kind of like, all right, they, I see y'all really went for it. They y'all y'all it. put some they effort in there. It. It's like, we got a Dan. Like we're going to make a caricature of Dan. And that's exactly what I would have imagined look like. And then the poppy one is like, it's like gradient. The poppy one's not <laughs> as good, but like, all right, it's the old version of that first guy. I get it. And then they got to you and they was like, Hey, Yo, on the lights. <laughs> Go ahead, drop that light. We need you real quick. Go sit down. <laughs> I saw somebody. I saw somebody. The thing that people had to say about me. One of them said I look like some kind of like a great value version of Thomas Jones. One dude said, "What my look?" And I think he nailed it with this one. He said he seen my look before. That's a man going to fight a speeding ticket. I was like, "You damn right." <laughs> it's me versus City Hall, and I'm gonna win one way or another. I just like it's so bad to the point where I'd actually kind of cool, and that nobody would actually think it was me if yeah. it were not for the other cats being there at the same time. Oh yeah, there's no way that people if they just show you that picture alone, just that guy. It's no way that anybody thinks that's you. They just they they ran out of uh, casting budget by the time they got to the end of the table. But what's so wild about it is that interview, and I know he became a meme from it, but I never actually knew what the meme was. I just knew that people talked about it. We did a lot of interviews on highly questionable rappers, and that one was maybe I have nothing I remember from it. There was nothing memorable that came out of that one. But apparently, it made a big deal to Twenty One Savage because I'm a part of his life story, baby. That's crazy. Yeah, it's shocked me. The only interview I remember from you on there, I mean, I remember a few of them, honestly, but when you guys discovered a rap mystery, that was fun. That was big. And also, I think you guys had Megan Good on one time, right? Yes, yeah, I, I remember that. I saw she she been in the news lately. Every time yeah, I see her, I think of my yeah, man. I gotta Bo say, Bonnie. the 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 new pity shine off of my my Megan Good moment is every every time that you know she corrected now, and so every time that uh, I just. Damn, dog. Like that one right there. Sometimes you just, 
I, I guess it's not supposed to be this way, right? But just a little less. I, I can't tell if the issue is that I feel a little less special or that, man, I probably should have just gone for it. <laughs> I should have just gone ahead. Apparently, what? you can, against, against some odds. I know, I know my shit was looking a lot smoother than what she's dealing with right now. And she jumped into it when it was on fire. She ran into a burning building to save this man. <laughs> she is a fire now you got me imagining her at home with a backbone. <laughs> She, she, she showed up and went out there and took it. Came down the pole. She got an axe in one hand and a fire hose in another. Boy, uh, <laughs> that's awful. My man. So, did he think that that went well the last time the Coretta stuff was like? I don't. I a don't, Part of his life. I don't. I don't. I don't understand anything at all surrounding Jonathan Majors. Like from top to bottom, I'm just. I don't know what to do, and I don't want to trivialize anything around Jonathan Majors, but I just want to point out, I'd be telling y'all, man, them dudes from Dallas is a different, like he's a Dallas ish. He, he from the general vicinity and that's the general vicinity of what the fuck. That's just kind of Dallas kind of leaves you like in that place. I just need to be glad he don't got no shag. Yeah, we don't. I mean, he do got a shag shaped head though, but obviously we don't need to delve into the serious nature of it, but I guess I should just let this go. However, I can't understand. The Coretta thing was around. We heard you say it. And he thought that the only problem we had with it was that he said it about someone who is not black, I guess. He's like, no, nah, they're going to love this. I'm going to roll it out again. Because you could see when it crossed his mind. And then he smiled. And he was like, I got my Coretta. Man, if you don't shut your ass up. <laughs> but dog, I just can't. I can only assume. And I could be wrong here. Okay. I don't know if she looked up and realized that she had always loved him. Right. And there's just something about this moment that got her to the place that she just like, yo, I just realized I always love this dude. But, uh, or maybe she thought that she was going to have like a Maya Moore type of situation, right? Like she was going to jump in here and then the world was going to find out that he was acquitted and then they was going to make a TV movie that they both could star in so they could get all the money, right? Maybe, maybe that is what the thought was. But I personally, Kate, I don't know what kind of love it would take for me to make the call to be like, nope, I'm going to walk past all those cameras holding your hand, (laughs) Oh no 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 no! Like 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 maybe if they had caught him like stealing from uh Ralphs, right? Yeah. Like 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 maybe there's a maybe even a DUI, right? Not I might this one, no. I might have your back there too. This <laughs> and it just feels so much like all right, you got to play this role for me because it's gonna help me with people. And like obviously, I don't know what's actually going on. Maybe they really love each other, but that ain't a job I need or a job I want at this moment. And I'm like, if you love me, you would not ask me to do this. How dare you? You go ahead and let on your own. I'll be here when you get back. <laughs> That's exactly my thought. I'm a. I can't imagine looking at somebody in that moment and just being like, I need you right now. <laughs> like, like I just not that kind of selfish. <laughs> We kind of had a similar conversation about this. I I think um, we had the same sentiment with like, it was around the time. I don't remember exactly what it was, but like some white people got caught up in saying some ridiculous things. Yeah. And you and I feel the same way is I may love you, white friend or non-black friend. And I got your back, dog. And I know you good with me. But you said some foolishness. That don't mean we can't be friends, but don't expect me to come out there and be the quote. I ain't yeah. going to be the quote. I yeah. am not going to be the quote. No, no, no. I think I forget who it was. Oh, I think Washington Post was doing a story on Will Kane once. And, you know, you and I oh. both talked about this. We don't yeah. dislike Will. Like, like it's not, you know, it's, I don't want to call it complicated because I feel like that's a cop out. But neither of us dislikes Will. But they called me to talk about my relationship with Will. And it was like, I think Will had told the writer that he and I text about stuff. And I looked at the text. I, I determined on my own that the quantity of text did not merit for this to be a friendship as documented in the Washington Post. It didn't need to be that. I'm like, nah, you're going to have to get this good PR on your own, brother. 
Yeah, interpersonally, he was fine. I have not kept up with him since he went over to a different network, but I, I've never agreed with him. But again, yeah, interpersonally, good dude. And also, like, doing stuff with him on air, it was always an effective foil. Because I always left a Will, Will Kane exchange feeling like I got a dub, which is a nice it's a nice way to feel. It was that time when it was the week of our birthday and I was taking oh. vacation and Colin Kaepernick decided to set the world on fire and do the national anthem thing and Will K was hosted by a radio show and apparently you and Will K had got in some argument on some TV show earlier in the day and then Shannon booked you with him because Shannon was getting tired of it himself and so Shannon booked you with Will K and you thought that y'all had chilled out and gotten cool and then you heard Heard Will K talking and you was mad all over again. That was back when you had been you were new enough to the game that you could really still get mad about that stuff like that. And you was heated, dog. I mean, it, it was it was a lot of reasons why I was heated in that moment. But honestly, I came in laughing. I hurt Will's feelings, if you remember correctly. I came in laughing about all of it, and Will was offended. I think I might have mentioned like him of I think I said something to the effect of like on this day. I tune into the Bo Marty Jones show like this is the show. This is the king of Ask a Black Man. And the black man did a blackity black man thing. And I tune in to the black man show on ESPN at the blackest moment in recent sports history. And Will motherfucking King is here. And so that's how that's how I entered it. And he was offended by that. And then I was like, oh, we offended? Okay, we can take it there if you want to take it there. And that's how it went down. The odds, the odds that the week I take off is not only the week that that happened. I had to call my own radio show just to let the people know, baby, it's cool. Like, you would have thought that Will had me hostage. And people yeah. just needed to hear, it's okay. He is treating me well. I am well fed. I am, dr- I am drinking lots of water. Like, it, it, it was, oh my goodness, what a time. And we got here from 21 Savage, which is, of course, just kind of like how we get down. I want to throw this out here. Uh, Nick Saban has uh, retired from Alabama. I told y'all this was going to happen last week. I honestly didn't have any sort of inside information. I was just reading tea leaves, and I was like, no, nah, it ain't going to happen. But, Dominique, I think that we could maybe have some fun with this part where somebody had asked me on Twitter, who is the funniest potential replacement? Because please understand, whoever gets this job, I mean, maybe you never, maybe you didn't want to live a long time because this is going to take some years off your life, right? Like you just need to understand that if you don't want to live a long time, that's fine, but it's going to take some years off your life. And people are asking who the funniest, uh, who the funniest uh, replacement for him could be. And I actually saw a winner from a man, Lawrence, Mel Tucker. He's available. He's worked at Alabama. He's had saving ties. Oh my gosh. It will take one loss before the naysayers are running free out the lips of angry <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> oh, it's going to be so many naysayers in that city. Dog, they, it, it wouldn't matter who the coach was. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Under no circumstance. Like, this is, I think, and I think I kind of alluded to this before and intimated it, but I believe that this is the truth here. And that is that this job is so bad. Like, it's, it's just so bad. But I think that Saban, Saban is self-aware. Like, one thing that Saban understood at Michigan State was, there's nothing I can do that will get this job to be Michigan, right? Like, I'll never get to that place. So he then went, to, went and took a job at a school where there was no other big-time program in the state. But he recognized, you weren't going to make Michigan State into Michigan. I have to think that he looked around at everything that was going on and he said to himself, it ain't never going to be what it's been. They finished in the top 10, 16 years in a row, right? But they don't, they not, top 10 ain't going to cut it. You know what I'm saying? He recognized it was not going to be that top five national title thing every year in all likelihood. And if it wasn't going to be that, then people going to run you out. You might as well run ahead of them. You you kind of like you mentioned it, how self-aware he is, but I feel like it deserves uh, a little bit of extra moment of focus of how outrageously impossible it is for a man of that ability or that success to be this level of self-aware, because to think that you could have this success, you got to have a level of delusion and self-confidence bordering on uh on crazy <laughs> to think that you could have this level of success and then to actually accomplish it and somehow calculate in your brain. Nah, we good here. 
Like, it's like they're two different people living in his body because the same person cannot do the, the same two things. No, that's, I mean, you raise a good point. And he, I felt like there was, like, like I don't know if you remember that during his call-in show this year where some guy called up and before the guy could start talking, Saban hit him back with, oh, the pass rush isn't any good. We can't get a running game going, da-da-da. All right, Pete, I need you to tell me what to do. I don't feel like we would have, I don't feel like Nick Saban was at a mental place in previous years to be able to laugh it off like he was at that point in a season that once again turned out to be one of those saving masterpieces. They they went to overtime in the playoff with the eventual national champion with a team that we thought was maybe going to go 9-3, and 8-4. and four. They beat Georgia in they the did. conference championship. Like <laughs> they did. The, the, the team that we actually think is probably the best team in the country, they knocked them off, and they almost got to the national championship and won it again. That would have been a, a great end to this story, but he knows better. Um, you said it's a bad job. I feel like we need another name for it. It's a, it's a, a mirage job or something because it's a big job with a great history, a recruiting base, and they're going to pay you a lot of money, and they're going to do everything that they can for you to succeed. But the problem me, is the expectation is too high. Once again, do you value a long life or a quality of life because this job is going to take a year off your life at every turn? Like that's, that's, I guess this is, this is why I say it is a bad job. It is a job where you will win. You will have one 10 or 11 win season. Everybody pulls that off at Alabama, right? Everything there is in place. But you basically got two choices. You can go down as one of the greatest coaches in the history of college football, and you can make an argument that Bear Bryant and Nick Saban are one and two based on what they did at Alabama, right? You can do that, or you could be completely devoured by this job. Every, even Gene Stallings, who won a national championship there, the gig kind of devoured him too. It eats everybody alive. And I just can't call a job good if you know it's going to eat you alive. But you might be able to get your Barry Switzer on. You might come in there and catch a, catch a championship off the, off the fumes before you get run out of there. Is there any other job that's like this? Because you know college football better than me. Is there any other job where, I mean, I feel like it was Nebraska at one point, but they learned quick that y'all ain't like that. But is there anywhere else where it's like, hey, the expectations are so high None. that an otherwise good None. job is None. actually a bad job? None. 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 It is this one. There are, there are jobs like Texas A&M where they just aren't self-aware enough to recognize what they are. Yeah. And so what they expect is impossible. The problem for Alabama is what they expect is not impossible. Clearly it's not impossible because Nick Saban just did it. Right? Like they synced it. They are not, they not operating on some hypothetical what we think we should be. No, we trying to be what we are. We trying to be what we been. That's what we trying to do. And you gotta be the one to be like, but I'm not Nick Saban. Well, well, you better well, whoever you are better be like that. Oh man, the fact that Nick Saban did it, uh brought it back is like really set it up for failure for anybody else because you go down the checklist of what you need for a good job, they I mean, if you don't even do a checklist, but like you grade every category, they meet just about every other category. I guess the exception of like Georgia has like that recruiting base that Alabama, except they recruit nationwide, but they don't have the at home guys like Louisiana and Georgia do, but everything else you have. Well, this is the thing. There is no reason why, because you're right, everything is there, right? But everything that you say they have, I could say about seven or eight teams in the SEC. One could make the argument. And so the thing about Alabama is there is no reason why they should be better than LSU. There's no reason why they should be better than Florida. There's no reason why they should be better than Georgia. There are reasons why they should be better than Auburn, right? Tennessee, there are reasons why they should be better, but Tennessee can mitigate that with some money. Ole Miss... They were just a little bit too dedicated to racism. But if it weren't for that, there would be no reason why Ole Miss would not be, could not be better than Alabama. The reason Alabama is better than all of them is because they want it. Like, there's no reasonable explanation for why Alabama is better than Ohio State. Except for the fact Alabama won't it like that. That's it. So... The the funniest one, Mel Tucker, but is there Dabo is the likeliest one because he things at be Clemson. Ah, uh, yeah, he can. I I heard Hold that on. man talk before. Hold on. 
He can't, I don't think he can be that stupid, but number two, and I think this is important, I don't think they think he's good enough. Fair. If this so was a couple years ago, get? maybe. So it might take some time for them to realize that smart coaches, or maybe there are people who aren't as self-aware as Nick Saban, and because this is not a job I would want. And even if they were willing to pay me a lot more than another place would, it's not a job I'm taking if I'm a good coach with choices. But Dominique, they learned that the last time this job was open and Rich Rodriguez told them no and a couple other people told them no. And you know what happened? They hired Nick Saban. <laughs> that shit can't happen again. It, it feels That's like Green Bay Packers and quarterbacks. It feels like the same thing Green Bay Packers and quarterbacks. Like They can't get another one. <laughs> they can't get another That's one. That's all I'm saying. And then Jordan Love throw 30 touchdown passes while I want nobody looking. But this is where... <sighs> Like, I mean, you're right there. What I wonder, though, is if there is a generation of coaches now that don't know, because people have asked the question, well, if you're Dan Lanning, would you take that job? I would tell Dan Lanning, hell no, stay at Oregon. That's one of the best jobs you could ever have because they you could get the money, you can win, and they only expect but so much like you can make it happen. But Dan Lanning's like 38. He has no recollection of the monster of Alabama that I know about. And so maybe he will be dumb enough to go down there and take that job. I would not while Georgia is at full hub. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So congratulations for Nick Saban because he got that last win over Kirby. Because if he if he waited (laughs) one more year, it was gonna be Kirby. The story be Kirby ran his ass up out of here. But as long as y'all tell that story, he gonna be like, remember that SEC championship? Got that motherfucker before I left. And let me tell you something: when you get run up out the paint. That becomes part of your historical story. Daryl Royal at Texas, for example. Barry Switzer ran his ass out the paint. Like It it is an unavoidable part of the story with him. 51 years old, never came back and coached again. Man had three national championships, all of that. Barry Switzer was like, oh, you don't want them boys? We'll take them, and we will run your ass off this job. And that is exactly like 100% what happened. Right fast, though, before we get to this break, uh... I thought Pete Carroll had quit his job or had retired from his job. And then I heard him talk and was like, oh, they canned him. Did you see it coming? I, I did not see it coming. I was surprised by it. But, I mean, they, they did it in the most graceful way they possibly could. But, I mean, it's justified. I didn't see it coming just because we were talking about so many other things. And this is a team that you could argue like has overachieved considering that they had to move on from a quarterback that they thought was a franchise quarterback, but they've overachieved to some degree in the last couple of seasons, but that defense man can't play defense no more. And they got players and they ain't good at it. And you, I I listened to your show and you made this point while I don't completely agree with it. It's, it's just, it's justifiable in all these decisions is don't nobody care about what you did. (laughs) <laughs> nobody cared about what you did that's the wonderful thing about like sports is we can talk about all these like the reasons and the context that's for us to chew on fact of the matter is there is a scoreboard don't nobody give a shit if the ref missed the call don't nobody give a shit if your players got injured don't nobody care if you can't find a quarterback arthur smith your ass ain't winning you unemployed i'm about to pause this podcast and go talk to my children and tell them this shit because all young people need to know that they need to be reminded that those reasons and excuses those are for your therapists they are not gonna get you no extension they're not gonna get you no money they're not gonna get you no success you see i figured you would agree with me on that outlook just simply because i'm just talking about treating these coaches like they treat these players that's yeah. all i'm saying nobody gets paid off what they did you get paid on what they think it is that you are going to do like you know, people talk about Bill Belichick and somebody giving him a whole new team and da-da-da, anything else. All I'm saying is, I don't think that when Jerry Jones bought that team and fired Tom Landry, that Tom Landry thought at that moment he wasn't never going to coach nowhere again. I don't think, like Don Shula, Don Shula's probably good enough to coach somewhere, but I don't know if somebody's going to pick him up. Like Pete, I feel like you could probably fold him in to something somebody's already doing and maybe make this thing happen, right? Like he doesn't seem like he's lost the players in that sense or whatever, but it's also entirely possible that man ain't never going to coach a game again. Yeah. I mean, they made him like an advisor. I thought maybe I misread that. Yes. We, yeah. We're court. Um, so like they, they're going to find a way to keep him involved in some way and try to let it be a graceful exit. He's going to get them consultant checks, but it's not even, and we, we have good conversation. We disagree. It's not an argument necessarily, but I, there's a couple ways that I look at this is like, just because they, 
do it to us don't mean it's the right way to handle things. And I also agree that the results are all that matters, but there is something to say, and specifically in the Sirianni case, if he can't coach, he can't coach. The sooner you can get away from a guy who can't coach, the better off you can be. And I, and saying that you went to the Super Bowl last year is not a justification for keeping you considering how bad things were. But you got to be ready to go somewhere else, a major improvement. When you do something like that, I think that the head coach, it shakes up the organization. And there are like things that are harder to measure, and maybe it's a shakeup that you need. But you have to understand that you're shaking up the organization and you could set your team on a path that you can't come back from, and maybe he is a good coach. All right, now we're going to come back and do some more of this, but I think the question for me about Sirianni is, are you capable of turning this around? And even if you're a very good coach and you can't, like, why do you fire Andy Reid in Philadelphia? We just don't think he can turn it around here. We're sure he'll be great in Kansas City, and we've seen how it went, but Philadelphia won a ring before Andy Reid did. He was not the guy to turn that thing back around. But we'll talk more playoff stuff uh, coming up next. Prize Picks is the most fun you can have by winning up to 25 times your money this football season, and now you can play during basketball season two. You just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. And with the NBA back, you can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from the Specials League, a league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports or leagues. Prize Picks is really simple to play. You can make your picks and submit your entry in less than 60 seconds. And if you stick around for the end of the show, you'll get to hear some picks from our producer, Sean, that can either help you win or make you fail miserably. So make sure you go to prizepicks.com slash Bomani and use code Bomani for a first deposit match of $100. That's prizepicks.com slash Bomani. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. It's a new year, which means it's time for everyone's New Year's resolutions. We tend to get obsessed with how to change ourselves instead of just expanding on what we're already doing right. This year, let's stop the new year, new you talk and focus on things we want to keep the same in 2024. Whether you found a consistent workout routine, a healthier diet plan, or decided to read more, let's continue the things we did well last year into the new year. Therapy helps you find your strengths so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. It's helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. It isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Bomani today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Bomani. Don't reinvent yourself for the new year. Just rehydrate yourself with liquid IV. With three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, plus eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness, Liquid IV hydrates two times faster than water alone, all in a single sugar-free stick, so you can feel like a hydrated new you ready to take on 2024. Liquid IV is super easy to use. Just take a pre-measured packet and pour it into a glass of water, mix it up, and enjoy. Use it before or after a workout or when you're feeling tired after a long day of travel. Plus, With their roster of flavors, you can easily find the right flavor for you and your taste buds. Rehydrate yourself for the new year. Grab Liquid IV Hydration Multiplier Sugar-Free in bulk nationwide at Costco or get 20% off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use code BOMANI at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code BOMANI at liquidiv.com. All right, Dominique, we got uh, NFL playoff action. I was sitting up in the crib, and the ESPN had something on the ticker. It said, how will zero degrees in Kansas City affect the Dolphins? And I was like, oh, easily. They're going to lose. <laughs> I was, Period. I was talking to somebody I know over there with the Chiefs, and they proposed to me, and I guess it's just when you're 
uh, associated with the team, you're a little bit more cautious. But they proposed to me that zero is so bad that it hurts everybody. And I was like, mm, maybe I never played in zero, but I do know that y'all been living in it. Y'all been practicing in it. You have home playoff games and something similar to it. If it's going to hurt everybody, it's got to hurt them a little bit more. Even though they run the ball, they still like the crux of their offense is throwing that thing. Yeah. And I mean, Kansas City, I feel like it's sneaky cold. Like I think the two obvious really cold places in the NFL are Green Bay and Buffalo. And I guess Chicago, but they played so few relevant football games in that place that nobody really thinks about it. But Kansas City, it's a lot farther south, but it's just on that flat land. And what people tell me, that wind get to whip it in that bad boy, and it just carry, it'll like, it like push you through. Yeah, it's a bad, I used to be, play for the Broncos, so we would switch off where the games were. Sometimes we get a November, December game in Kansas City at night, and it was terrible. But I think I played a December game, a 8 p.m. start in Buffalo, and it was still like in the 20s, which is cold as hell. But honestly, and maybe it's different for offensive guys who have to catch the ball and handle the ball a lot more often. Like the cold ain't too bad. But again, I never played in zero. Like if you think about it, I was playing in the 20s, and they, that's 20 degrees away from zero, and that's well below freezing. Like they, they didn't have they have like heated fields on some places, and Buffalo at the time didn't have a heated field. So the worst part was not being cold, even though that sucked. But you come off the field, they put a big jacket on you. You sit on the heated benches, put the jacket on your chest so it traps all the hot air. It feels fine. You have a hand warmer. You go out there, you make a couple plays. What was worse about what was the worst part of that game was the ground. They didn't have the heated turf. So the ground was hard as hell. And it was like field turf. So you imagine field turf, you're supposed to be able to dig your feet into it. You couldn't. It wasn't just falling on the ground. The cleats, no matter how long they were, they didn't help. That was the worst part. But the coldest I've ever been was not even below freezing just because it was wet. That's what really messed it up. But it's so wild that they didn't have the heated field because, you know, like the the whole talk of like frozen tundra and stuff, which I don't think was actually said on the NFL Films broadcast. But they said that Lombardi did not want that in there because he had paid for the coils under the field to heat. Like, you know, like it was making him look bad. Vince Lombardi died in like 1970 or 1971. It's the it's the 21st century, and you said Buffalo didn't have no heat on the field. They didn't have no heat under the field. I don't know. Maybe it was broken. Maybe they ain't pay their bill. This was way back before they got Josh Allen and the and the uh, value of the team changed. I don't know what it was, but I know that I couldn't get my cleats dug in. Maybe it was a st- strategic thing, like how um soccer clubs let their their grass grow. Maybe they was doing something like that, but. We got to win, and it sucked. Yeah. Um, you talked about uh, Josh Allen. That was all my back boys gave for Miami, and I, I couldn't tell. I sent you a text at one point like, yo, what's the opposite of menace? Because early he was looking like the opposite of menace, and then he had this one throw to Stephon Diggs off the back leg that was just like, oh, my God, what are you doing? And they pulled that thing out of the end. That 13-yard, third and 13, that was the one right there. They needed, and he had no design on throwing that ball because they wanted the clock to keep running. He dropped back and was like, all right, Christian Wilkins tried to tackle this man five yards shy, and he just fell off. And some other linebacker tried to tackle. He just fell off, and then there was a, a cornerback back there just at the line. He gave him a, gave him a little matador axe. He's like, hey, those two dudes can't get him. I ain't going to do nothing about this. You ever had something that you just felt like doing in the moment, but maybe you wish you had never done because you hear about it more than you ever expected to? Absolutely. When you said that about Christian Wilkins, my first thought, a man that's known for doing the splits. (laughs) When Cam said that about him, that was the coldest thing I did. It's just like, yeah, man, then I realized, man, I'm talking about a dude who's known for doing the splits. That's what we should have known that boy was going to be a podcast beast. <laughs> I think in that game, too, Josh was really upset at him after one play because he was doing some funny business in the pile. Like He seems like an entertaining guy, and he's a hell of a defensive tackle. But you're right. I ain't never going to forget that in his shining moment, the highest professional achievement of his <laughs> life, he decided to drop it on us. <laughs> <In front> of, <laughs> so it, also confetti. He did the splits also confetti. Uh, I would also like to take this moment to point out, in case you're wondering, wow, uh, why is Clemson not as good as they used to be? Yeah. 
he was like the other defensive tackle. It was him and Dexter Lawrence out there together. <laughs> He's the little one. He's the little one. That's crazy. They was That's in the nuts. ACC too. <laughs> yes. That's nuts. That's <sighs> nuts. Um, I don't think you and I have talked about the Eagles. You brought them up. They're playing in the Monday night playoff game. And boy, you want to talk about something I don't feel like watching. Like, let me tell you this, Nick Sirianni, you might want to bring it. Y'all the only game that day. I don't recommend y'all go down there to Tampa and to lose that game. Like part of it seems to be Jalen Hurts is hurt. You know, I don't, it's a little tough. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to sound corny, but he's a little bit hurt. And them boys don't seem like they want to play football no more. That looked like an injury. (laughs) <laughs> don't Jalen Hurts like you know they say the difference is, there's a difference between injured and hurt that man finger was zigzagging that looked like an injury that he is playing with just like his knee for much of this season was an injury that he was playing with um yeah it's a bad spot too because we're gonna talk about all Saturday and Sunday games on Monday Tuesday morning all we're gonna do is dissect that thing the whole damn day. So y'all better get away if you care at all about Nick Sirianni's job security or his mental well being. They better show up and figure some shit out. Damn it, Matt Patricia and that defense. Did you see? Oh, never mind. Go ahead. And that game is all ESPN. So that means after we get through, after y'all get through, I gotta stop saying we all work there no more. After y'all get through, talk about you know whatever happened the day before. It's all about selling that game that night. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> all about selling that. Will Nick Sirianni get shit canned tomorrow morning? Find out on Get Up. But tonight, it's the Eagles, the Bucks. What if uh, Bill Belichick, uh, they make the move on him before then, before that game, that he just going to be looming over it the whole time? Ooh, that's a good point. <laughs> that's, a, that's a, ooh, they'll, yeah, they'll, they'll get to cooking that one up. They'll get to cooking that one up. I want to ask how you feel as a black man about this one here with the Packers and the Cowboys, because good for Jordan Love, man. Like I'm still not completely sure, but apparently it's worked out well for them this year. I say apparently because... Man, I ain't been watching him play, but they made it to the playoffs. He got 30 touchdown passes, which, I mean, that is a higher number than I think that people realize. Like, even with the change in rules and everything else, there really aren't that many people who get to throw in 30 touchdown passes. He did it his first year as a starter. And this is with the team where we're like, damn, if only they gave Aaron Rodgers somebody to throw the ball to. He got 30 touchdown passes with them dudes. Good for him. On the other side, Dak, who 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 bet not lose. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I don't know how well he has to play to to not it's, he better not lose. You know I don't believe in that he wins about the quarterback, but him better not lose. Yeah, I mean whether we believe in the wins about the quarterback or not, we do know that if they lose, well, that's all we're gonna talk about. Well, that's all that's going to be talked about. And it and well, well we hold have- on. There's number two thing. Mike McCarthy getting fired. Yeah, we'll be yeah, talking about true, that. That's true. That's true. It's gonna happen immediately. So then we're gonna move on to Dak very quickly because I do think that uh, Jerry is serious about that foolishness. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's wild. Um, but yeah, so the Jordan Love thing. So I haven't watched a bunch of their games either, but I've gone back to watch a lot of his throws, just about all his throws this season. And he's good. Like he's actually really good. And I think they should feel secure with the Jordan Love situation. But given the behavior of their last couple of great quarterbacks, I don't know if it's about playing up there in no man's land for too long. He better not. He better not be too good because a couple years after you after you leave uh, Green Bay, people just be acting up. If you're the quarterback there for a long time, you just act up when you get into the real world. Well, I want to throw two things out there. Thing number one about Jordan Love, and as many of you know, he played um, at Utah State in college. You think they be di- they was disappointed around there when they found out that he was not related to Mia Love? <laughs> And that, that lady name. <laughs> just, just, just throwing it out there. I just wonder if he had, no, no, I've never met Mia Love before. Like, I wonder how many times that, you know. He just I'm had positive that. they were disappointed. But yes, you have to give this. some credit to uh, Brian Gutekunst. I've been, because even back when Aaron Rodgers was complaining about the weapons, he was complaining about the assets that they used to acquire the weapons. He was never without weapons. He always had a good offensive line, and they've done it again. The offensive line has been rebuilt with low-level draft picks, and they got a ton of young, talented receivers. The defense, as always, is 
underachieving, but that's always what they do. To be able to do this time and time again, maybe it's because you up in Green Bay, you ain't got nothing else to do but just study roster construction because it's it's a really impressive feat. And I know he wasn't there for the first, uh, for the Brett Favre stuff, but what they've done over um, Aaron Rodgers' career and right into make the playoffs immediately after with a quarterback that's very good, like teams look at the the Bears, they never had a good quarterback. Never. Right. And they've they had got Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. <laughs> 30 Hall years of Fame, Hall of Fame play. And, and a guy who I think looks like a pro bowler right now. Now, you mentioned Aaron Rodgers and the madness with him. I I did not watch the thing that he did on McAfee's show the other day. And it was actually wild because it was on TV, but I was playing records. And so I was looking out on the TV, but I wasn't listening. And people told me they talked about like the vaccine stuff for 20 minutes. And all I'm asking is, we still talking about that? Like, like, no matter whether or not you agree with him or whatever it was, I thought this matter had been adjudicated. I went to go get my last booster. I done got some, I done got jabbed up that they might want to call to fight. You know what I'm saying? But I, I went, I ain't had nobody in line trying to get it before me. I was cool with the short, with the short line. All right, cool. I thought we had agreed to disagree on this matter. He has not found a new thing. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's weird. I mean, psychoanalyzing him is impossible, and it seems like we're not going to have to, or at least us at ESPN aren't going to have to uh, think about it much more. We certainly ain't going to talk about it, and I ain't going to talk about it either. But I do think, and your your point about getting the booster, yeah, I got that too. And, like, I think the tough thing about all that is, you're right, we, it feels like we've moved on from it, but it wasn't. It, it, it never was the idea about being skeptical. It was – at least the uncomfortable thing was like the dishonesty around all of that. So like and peddling information that can't be proven is or that you can't prove is dangerous as hell. But what's worse than all of that was the lion coming up in there. Cause like if people want to make their own decisions, they can make their own decisions, but allow the other people around you to make their own decisions too. I like, I would like to be around. I'd, I'd like to not be around you. Or I'd like to ensure that I keep my mask on in these situations. And it was like, I, I, um, one of the things I've told you this before, one of the things that I regretted about my career was like, I kind of went off on him on TV a while ago. And part of it was like, like my wife is immunosuppressed and like there are people in my family and it wasn't so much that he, that he or anybody else in yeah, I'll take it off of him specifically. It's not so much that people choose not to do the things that, that the best science at the time told us would keep us all safe. It was that people was lying about it. Like, and I, I, and I know people who like got it and then they was going out before the guidelines. Like, no, like just please. Like, it, it's not just about you. It's about other people. And that was always the worst, most dangerous part. Well, I hate the fact that he's so proud of himself. Like I admit that I like that breathes the resentment in me is kind of looking at his face while he does all this stuff. Right. And he's just so proud. Like he felt like he getting one over. And I mean, you know, there's, there's all the levels I ain't about to, I, yeah. you and I got a friend that'll, that'll put your money on the line in these times like this. And I ain't going to do that to you because I love you too much. You know right. what I'm saying? I, I ain't doing that, but I just, it's, it's the level of pride in himself. And I'm telling you, man, we going to see what this is for the jets next year because I don't know why we think a 40-year-old man coming off an Achilles tear is going to be worth a good goddamn. I, was, I, don't, I don't really see any way that he comes back next year and he's balling. And all this other stuff that he's doing, well, I guess he ain't going on McAfee no more, so I guess that'll be out of there. But all this other stuff that he's been doing, man, like it ain't, that only flies either A, if you're winning, or B, you're still trading on the idea of the legend of Aaron Rodgers. And the legend of Aaron Rodgers will go away if you come out there not looking good. And, and like you said earlier, ain't nobody trying to hear those excuses. They don't care about your Achilles. They, they ain't trying to hear that. Achilles. They don't care about the strength of that offensive line. They don't care about Nathaniel Hackett or Robert Sala, who are probably only still there because Aaron Rodgers is there. Because can you imagine doing the coaches sh- search right now? Can you imagine like as much as Robert Sala might be frustrated by having to deal with all this other stuff? Don't nobody want that job right now. Don't nobody worth nothing. Imagine all these hot shot coaches out here whose names going around. You come in there and they be like, hey, you want to take this over? Nah. Hold on. Nah. And you already the Jets. You already the Jets. <laughs> Oh, you got to come in here. And we saw it on Hard Knocks. I'm so glad they had Hard Knocks. And the thing about ESPN, or excuse me, about HBO was 
those filmmakers made Aaron Rodgers into something that was like uh, like a, a hero and sympathetic. Like I was watching like his players love me, good dude. Like I was starting to cheer for him and, and root for him and it was fun. But what we also saw in the Hard Knocks cameras was how quickly he went from free agent or from trade acquisition to everything in that organization. And it seemed like he's more important. He has more power than everyone next to Woody Johnson or maybe including Woody Johnson, the owner of the team. If I got choices, it's, I, it's neck and neck between that and Carolina for the worst places to go coach. Ooh. Yeah. You're going to have to yeah. pay me 25. It, it, that, Carolina, the Jets, and Alabama. Three worst, <laughs> third worst jobs in sports right now. All bad. All bad. Um, Cleveland-Houston is an interesting game, by the way. It would be even more interesting if the nasty man was playing, except if the nasty man was playing, the Browns might not be in the game. <laughs> they, I had forgotten that he took Houston to a conference championship, right? No, they just had they, they won that game when uh, Josh Allen went YOLO over and oh. over and over again. But they did oh. not win a game after that. Oh, yeah. And they, they had a big lead against Kansas City that we all kind of was like, yeah, eh, that ain't going to last. And it didn't last. <laughs> Correct. That's exactly, it went exactly <laughs> as we thought it would. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, so that, that game's going to be good. I think the tough thing about that is I don't want to root against Houston – Oh, I'm not rude against them. I don't want to pick against them. Like the D'Amico story is great. The CJ story is great. Houston in general is great. It's a fun team to root for, a fun quarterback to root for. However, looking back at the Stroud tape, man, and looking at them Stroud numbers, as great as he's been, tight man coverage ain't his thing. That's the one place where there is some weakness. And, hey, they got some good corners, and they got a pass rush, I think. And then you have whatever... To whatever degree it's a real thing, like playoff experience, however much it matters or doesn't matter, it feels like it's going to matter. And it feels like after he had that primetime game against uh, the Colts and it's kind of like, hey, this is a must win. And he balled. He did some stupid, ridiculous passing like that. That man's special. This might be the time where we have this uh, welcome to the NFL moment. It took a long time because the last one he had three interceptions in the Cardinals game in which he went on to win, by the way. Three of his five on the season, he went on to win that game. I, I remember correctly. Um, and, yeah, so this game could be a tough one for him unless Joe Flacco decide, or I guess unless uh, his young DBs decide to catch the balls that Joe Flacco is inevitably going to throw at them. I just want to throw it out here. Uh, my homeboys say that he ain't never seen D'Amico Ryans and Willie D in the same place. <laughs> you just want, just want to, in case you were curious, those two gentlemen had never – been in the same place uh, <laughs> oh god let him I, tell it i feel like um they could have got D'Amico ryan or willie d and either one of them would have been a better bomani stand-in on 21 yes. savage <laughs> Dude, they could have got they could have got dominique fosworth they could have <laughs> got michael blackson any of these people would have been better better stand-ins uh oh, for me than, than hold, on, I, hold, I, on, I just, hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on why I got to be grouped with Michael Blackson? What are we doing here? I was just trying to say anybody in the okay, world. Okay, it's right. Okay, okay, okay. That's all I was, I was saying. I need to get in the gym. I need to get in the gym. My man, no, I, did, I, did, I wasn't trying to make you. I mean, it was a tough week for Michael Blackson. Cat Williams. Cat Williams. <laughs> I guess I haven't talked about this Cat Williams thing anywhere because I don't even know where to begin on it. But I did not realize that Michael Blackson was using a fake African accent. Like, yo, I have never had an opinion of someone change so swiftly. Oh man, Cat went after so many people. Like you, like you said, I don't know where to start. It was magical and enjoyable. I don't know how much is true, how much is false, but enough of it I know has to be true that the rest well, of it is close enough to be funny. Someone informed put it to me like this: everything that he said about other comics is true. Don't believe anything he said about himself. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. When that man said he ran a four one sub four yes. sub four three, it's like okay, stop. And they released the footage of him running four four or a four four thirty. Like <laughs> you better stop it. Well, it was is the fact that he said that, and he said that with the same confidence as he said other things. I'm unsure of that. That was the one particular prevarication that yeah. endangered everything. Because bruh, if you ran a four one, we would know your name. 
<laughs> and, and not for these jokes. <laughs> and he ran, uh, or and he read thirty or three thousand books a year when he was a kid. Nonfiction. Okay. <laughs> I just be trying to knock out two or three a year, baby. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. He did, he did the most. He did the most. But I tell you this: everybody he brought it for. One word I did not hear coming from them was "That's not true." I didn't see too much of that. Yeah, I feel like in all the responses, just they, they probably shouldn't have responded at all. Like I don't. I mean, people was excited about Luda's verse, and that was probably the best response. And I ain't do nothing. Wait, he for did me. a verse. Oh, you didn't notice Luda? Luda did a freestyle. <laughs> I'm glad to share this with you. So I don't, if you want to take a break and take a listen to it, you can. But I will tell you this thing. You remember uh, Kat took out everybody's wives, too. Yes. Luda did a response where he addressed all of Kat's claims, except he had no point did he squeeze in there a defense of his wife. And that was the big, and also the verse, I mean, people were celebrating, thought it was good, I guess, considering that it was short notice, maybe it was good. I, I know Luda can really rap, and it wasn't really that great. Yeah, I mean, like, can't nobody let that slide, though, Bo, huh? Can't nobody, and I guess I get it to a degree, because I'd have had some people I'd have let lie about me, and you look up and you realize that the lie becomes the public record, right? Like, you get to that point. I'm just going to say, though, if you got to wrap your response to something that wasn't a rap in the first place, you've lost. <laughs> it was bad, man. He, uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess there is a verse that was good enough that could win me over, but I feel like you're right. Once you once you put on a beat, it's like, what are you doing, man? Stop yeah, it. if the other person ain't on the beat, you don't. You don't need to be on a beat. Wow, Trick Daddy K. Wow, this is such a this is a headline. Celebrity strike back against Cat Williams, Kevin Hart, Ludacris, Trick Daddy, Tiffany Haddish, and more. Trick Daddy he got an et al. He got an et al. Trick responded Daddy's, to what he said in that long ass interview. His response was so the, he didn't even Trick Daddy was responding to like a stand up or something, right? Uh, he wasn't even responding to. I think so. So yeah, Cat called Trick ugly essentially in a joke. And Trick's response was, "You down here with me?" It was essentially his response. It was like we got we around the same level financially, which to me is like. It's not a great response. Nobody's response was really good. Nobody really went at Cat. I don't know if it's because they are scared or they don't have the ability, but when that man go out there and spray up the whole industry and, and nobody come back with a with a quality clap, except the, the, reminding us that he got beat up by like a teenager. I guess that There's was the that. best. That, that's the best clap back. The problem is Cat owns that too well. He's like, I didn't know he was the strongest teenager in the world. Um, but the problem is you can't get out there clapping with Cat because then all he going to do, like I said, my brother, they tell the story about when my brother was a little boy and somebody hit him and he came home and told my parents that somebody hit him and they asked him why he didn't hit him back. And his response was, because all he do is hit me again. That is kind of <laughs> how I feel about clapping back at Cat Williams. Like all that, the, the, the brother moves on. What uh, must I do? For this man raise his gun again. <laughs> I don't want Brother Muzal to raise his gun again. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing about being funny, man. That, that's it's crippling. You can't do nothing with that. You can lose. A, you lose many arguments if you got the better hand, the better debate, the better reason. Don't matter. That dude entertaining. You done. Dominic, let me tell you something, man. We don't have it like set up here for like phone calls you know but i used to you know have the phone calls with listeners and you know obviously you have people that call up and break bad we you know talk crazy to your boy all of that type of stuff right that would happen but the people who respected me they approach real tenderfoot right trepidation they they weren't trying to make no noise they weren't trying to wake the baby up right they just like hey hey i just want to ask you a question i just want to start off by saying i got the utmost respect for you Right. Like I even had like famous people who did like something I said about them try to call to check me. And it always oh, yeah. starts with, I just want to let you know how much I respect what you do. I noticed you that know? on on social media too. Like I feel like there's always a preamble when people are, I mean, I don't see people tweeting at you, but sometimes I see you responding to people and there's normally a preamble before anybody challenges you. Like, I want you to know. <laughs> yeah. They ain't trying to get clapped, man. And I'm like, now imagine that with Cat Williams. Oh, yeah. 
Like, if I had a disagreement with Cat Williams, brother, we going to talk about that on the phone. <laughs> like, but I would that, be the first one to tell you, hey, man, I was just, I heard what you said, and I just, like, you know, Dave Chappelle said he had to come at Cat Williams personally. You see this story about the Twitter situation? Uh-uh. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was a, uh, there was a fake cat. That was a, a yes. while ago, I think, right? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. He was like, the, the, the Cat Williams account was saying things to the fake Dave Chappelle account that were hurting the real Dave Chappelle's feelings. <laughs> <laughs> and so he had to go pull a cat to the side. He ain't trying to go clap at cat in no uh, special. Don't nobody want that. That's the thing, too. Again, back to my point about humor is like, even if you crush somebody like in a debate and completely undercut every argument they have and make them look silly, that ain't that ain't as as uh, it don't last as long as a well-told joke. <laughs> he said that woman sound big on the radio and they were, and, and they was so bad that they ran up on him because the because clapping wasn't gonna do it you're not going to win that contest man yep, they brought out real guns because because yes. he was so funny that they met him at the club with real hammers they tried to bring the element in because he was just too damn funny mm. dude He's five foot five, and y'all rolled up on him with hammers. <laughs> Can we talk about that part for a second? He's five foot five, and y'all rolled up on him with the with the iron. <laughs> it's absurd. Yeah, Nobody's I... ashamed of themselves. Nobody. Hey man, that right there. That is Dominique Fosworth. Check him out on the Dominique Fosworth Show, available where all fine podcasts can be found. I appreciate you, sir. Thank you. All right, right fast. The voicemail number 323-596-7767. 323-596-7767. Uh, in honor of the Alabama job coming open, tell us about the worst job you ever took. You thought that job was going to be one thing, but it was the other way. 323-596-7767. Also got my man Sean. What's the prize picks for the people player? Alliteration. All right, Bo. Got some prize picks for you. Got Saturday wild card slay. I'm taking David and Joku, 56 and a half receiving yards. I'll take more. Isaiah Pacheco, 65 and a half rush yards. I'll take more. And I think Jerome Ford is going to get a touchdown. That's all I got for this week. There we go. And ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us here on The Right Time. We do this three times a week. That's Sean Yu. Sean Yu, he handles everything behind the scenes. Thank you, sir. Remember, follow The Right Time. Like, subscribe, rate us, review us, give us five stars. You only give us four stars. I'm inclined to believe you are a hater. We'll talk to you guys in a couple of days. Take it easy. (laughs) 